إذا الأمجاد قد عظمت فللأمجاد بانيها ومن يسعى إلى العليا سيدركها بما فيها ويبني مجده جدلا فروح الفاذ يعليها ليصبح همة تروي عن العليا مغانيها Assalamu alaikum and welcome to the ITV Math Show here on channel 347 DSTV. Guys, you guys have been following our series of programs since the beginning of Ramadan. And I'm your host and presenter, Muhammad Kota, that will be showing you the grade 10, 11 and 12 learner different ways, better ways, easier ways, simplified ways in which to do mathematics. Now remember the show, guys, is not only for you, the learner. It's for parents who would like to be involved in the mathematics process or in the mathematics development of their child. For people who would like to recap their work, those parents who are rewriting their mathematics or those learners who also want to do, who are writing their supplementary examinations and they would like to brush up on their mathematics. The show is for you. Okay, now we ended up the last show with exponents and we did, as promised, we said today's show is going to be focusing on thirds. Now there were two or three problems from exponents that I would have liked, that came up as very popular questions. I'd like to do that before we actually start with thirds. So I'm just going a little bit back. I'm backtracking to the previous episode on exponents and the question in the exam. Remember the question in all those exams would just say simplify. So... The question now says simplify. Remember guys, we're starting with the show. I'm doing simplification, three examples of simplification of exponents before we actually go on to the topic of thirds. We will complete thirds by today. Okay, so let's start with the simplification problem. The problem says x squared to the power n minus 1 times x to the power 3y to the power minus 2n times x squared over xy to the power negative 3n times y to the power negative n. Now guys, problem like this could be four to f worth 4 to 5 marks in the examination. So, let's get started. Step number 1. We need to remove the brackets. Okay, now when, remember from our rules, from our previous episode. I'm not going to be putting down the rules of exponents now. If you've missed that, go back onto the website, itv uh, itvnetworks.tv. Go onto the, click onto the K-Way logo, upload, or you can uh, uh, video stream the previous episodes. So go onto the episode on exponents. All the rules for exponents were put down on the previous show. Let's get started. We're now going to be removing, we said in the previous episode, when you raise a power to a power, you multiply the power. So now we have x to the power, 2 times n is 2n, 2 times minus 1, negative 2. Remember, this is for grade 11 and 12, okay? So, times x to the power, 3 times minus 2n, minus 6n, times y to the power minus 2n. Remember, the x and the y must be raised because both of them, this brackets, incorporates the x cubed and the y times x squared over x to the power negative 3n, y to the power negative 3n times y to the power minus n. There we go. We've removed the brackets. You don't just simply remove the brackets. You follow the laws of exponents. When you raise a power to a power, you multiply the powers. Okay? Let's now go, let's now collect our like terms. Like I said, let's start with the x. So we're now going on to x's. So now, let's just circle that. We're going to be dealing with this x, that x, and that x. So now, we are multiplying, so we put 1x. So there we go, there's the x. We're now multiplying, so we add the powers. So we have 2n minus 2, there we go, minus 6n, plus 2, times... I've only got one y here, y to the power negative 2n over x to the power negative 3n times, I, I've got two y's here, I've got a y there and a y there, minus 3n, minus n. Okay, let's continue. Let's collect our like terms in the power. We're adding the powers, so let's collect our like terms. So we've got x to the power 
2n minus 6n is minus 4n, minus 2 plus 2 will give me 0, times y to the power minus 2n over, let's put the x below the x and the y below the y, x to the power minus 3n times y to the power minus 3n minus n minus 4n. Okay, so let's quickly go through this again with you. 2, 2n minus 2 times x to the power minus 6n, y to the minus 2n, x squared over x to the power negative 3n, y to the minus 3n, y to the minus n. x to the power 2n minus 6n minus 4n minus 2 minus 2 plus 2. There we go, will give me 0. y to the power minus 2n over x to the negative 3n, y to the negative 3n, y to the negative n x to the minus 3n, y to the power minus 4n. So we know we are right. We just did a quick check. I don't want to make a mistake here on TV. So let's go back. Now we have x to the power negative 4n plus 3n. So we have minus 4n plus 3n times y to the power minus 2n plus 4n. Remember, minus, you're subtracting the powers. So minus 2n minus minus 4n. So negative times negative is a positive, so it's minus 2n plus 4n. Minus 2n plus 4n. What is that? What does that give us? x to the power minus 4n plus 3n, negative n, times y to the power minus 2n plus 4n is 2n. Can that be my final answer? No. Why not? What did we say in our rules? We said in our rules in the previous episode that you can never leave your answer with a negative power. Powers must always be positive. So, we have now y to the power 2n over x to the minus n comes down to the denominator as x to the power plus n. And guys, that is your final answer. Okay, so please make sure you take this problem down. Remember, you, nothing has been put in the, in the problem or in the question that will have absolutely no value or no purpose in the problem. So everything needs to be identified and each component needs to be sorted out according to your rules of exponents. Okay, so here we go. This was the first of the type, of the exam type questions that I thought that we could include in the show so that you, the viewer, can be fully prepared. Remember something, when you are writing the exams, we don't want you to get to the exam and say, hey, you know what, but we didn't cover this in the show. We didn't see this before. This came up in the exam, but ITV didn't cover it. We want to make sure that we leave no stone unturned. So even before I get to search, I'd rather make sure that we do this exponents thoroughly. Okay, so this was the first question. The second two that we're going to do, right, before we get to actually, before we get to thirds, let me, let's erase this. I hope you've taken this down. Remember, I just continued here to the side because we didn't have enough space. We're waiting for the new board to come in. Okay, let's go and let's erase. Okay, we're now going to be going on to the second question. Right, the second one would be, looks like this. The question also in the exam says simplify. And it says 4 to the power n times 2 to the power n plus 2 minus 8 to the power n over 2 squared times 3 to the power 0 times 2 to the power 3n. Problem like this, guys, 4 marks in the exam. Okay, so take this problem down. 4 to the n times 2 to the n plus 2 minus 8 to the power n over 2 squared times 3 to the 0 times 2 to the 3n. Let's see, do you know how to do that? Are we going to be following exactly the same laws as we tried before? Let's see how it's done. Okay. We're now going to break it up into our prime basis, guys. 4, 2 squared to the power n times 2 to the power n plus 2 minus this, the number 8 is 2 to the power 3 to the power n. Remember, there's a minus sign here. There's a negative sign. Over, what do we have here? We've got 2 to the power... Look, we've got two twos, right? And we're multiplying. So it's 2 plus 3n. 2 plus 3n times... We know any base to the power 0 is 1. Okay? Now, let's remove the brackets here. So we're now going to have 2 to the power 2 times n is 2n times 2 to the power n plus 2 minus 2 to the power 3 times n is 3n over 2 to the power 3n plus 2 to 
Remember, 2 plus 3n or 3n plus 2 is the same thing. Times 1, it still remains exactly the same. So let's say plus 2. Okay, let's collect our like terms here. I'm just going to move over to the side because of space. We now have, that is your fraction, we now have 2 to the power. 2n plus n is 3n plus 2 minus 2 to the power 3n, right? 2n plus 1n, 3n plus 2. We're multiplying, so we add the powers. Minus 2 to the power 3n over 2 to the power 3n plus 2. Now, at this point in time, guys, at this point in time, it looks very tempting. And I know many guys that are sitting here in studio also that are following. Remember, everybody here in our studio is focused on the match show. They're even sitting with their pens and papers trying to follow, follow the whole show. Right, guys? That's it. And, and, I bet, and I bet that you guys are sitting there in studio and you're looking at this problem and you say, Okay, I know what the answer is. And I know, Peter, what you're going to be saying. You say 2 to the power 3n plus 2 and that 2 to the power 3n plus 2, you can cancel it out. You're wrong. <laughs> <laughs> you are wrong. You are so wrong. You cannot do that because you've got a negative or positive sign separating terms. If this was a multiplication sign, Peter, if that was a multiplication sign, no problem. Now you take that out and that out, no problem. Your answer is 2 to the power 3n. But, the moment you have a positive or negative, there are separate terms. So, in effect, so you might ask, so why can't I do that? Let's explain to you why. Because this 2 to the 3n plus 2, it belongs to that, and this belongs to that term as well. This doesn't only belong to that term. This denominator belongs to both these terms here on the top. So hence, we now break the top up. Now watch. So now we're going to break it up into 2 to the 3n times 2 to the 2. You agree with that? Right? Minus... Because when we multiplying and bases are the same, we're going to add the powers, we're going to get back that. So if we're breaking it up, it's 2 to the 3n times 2 to the 2. Minus 2 to the power 3n over, we're now going to break the denominator up, 2 to the power 3n times 2 to the power 2. Agree with that, Peter? Good. We're going to use Peter as our yardstick in all the, in, in all the shows. Peter, you better make sure that you are part of this show right through until the end. You're going to be a master. At the end of the year, you're writing the math exam with everybody else. Right. So here goes. Now, we broke these two terms up. We now want to pull out the highest common factor. Now, what is common? Have a look here. You've got that and you've got that. What is common? 2 to the power 3n is common. So we take out 2 to the power 3n as the highest common factor. So that's out, that's out. What's left over? 2 squared minus 2 to the 3n divided by 2 to the 3n is 1. Any number divided by itself will give you 1. Okay. And now that we've got Peter part of the show, my, my focus is now between the camera and Peter sitting there in the studio. So if I'm looking that way, uh, just now I'm looking behind the glass. Okay, I'm looking at Peter, eh? Right. So now we got 2 to the power 3n times, what do we have? 2 squared being 4. Following Peter? <laughs> nice to know we've got a student, a, a, a student in studio. So now, 2 to the power 3n and 2 to the power 3n will cancel out. Now they can cancel. Why? Because you're multiplying. Remember that I said if that was a multiplication sign, you could cancel. So now, that and that will cancel out. What are we left with? 2 squared, which is 4, minus 1 over 4. Because that and that is out. 4 minus 1 is 3 over 4. And there we go, guys. 3 over 4, that is your final solution. If you went and you cancelled here and there, you would have had, your final answer would have been 1 minus 2 to the power 3 and you would have been absolutely wrong. Okay guys, we're cutting for an ad break. We're cutting for an ad break. When we get back, I'm going to do one more exponent and then we start with thirds. So stay tuned. I hope you're enjoying the show. <laughs> Assalamu alaikum and welcome back to the ITV Math Show with me, your host and presenter, Mohammed Kota. I hope you guys have, if you guys have just joined us, we're having a blast of a time here in studio doing math. We love math here in studio. Not just me, the cameraman, the mixers, everybody's involved in this math show. So we hope you, the viewer, enjoying it just as much as we are. Now we ended up, before we said we're going to be starting with thirds, we ended up with some of the exponents that we didn't cover from the previous episodes. So we ended up with this problem here. I hope you guys have taken it down or I hope you've paused your PVRs and 
you know, uh, taken the problem down. I'm now going to give you one in a very similar style to this, just to reinforce the concept of how these problems are done. So let's go back and let's do one last one, guys. This is the final question that we're going to be doing. Remember, this is for grade 11s and 12s. So what we're going to be doing now is doing the final question here before we actually crack on thirds. Okay, so let's start. The question again in the exam just says simplify. Remember guys, mathematics is there to simplify your life. That's why all these questions will just say simplify. Many of you still don't know what the purpose of mathematics is. You say, but why? It's so many different, so many difficult concepts. At the end of the day, you will never get a question in the exam for five marks that will say complicate. It will never. Right? The question will always say simplify. So hence, just by the style of the question, is already informing you that yes, here yeah, we at mathematics, we are here to simplify your life, not to complicate your life. So let's get started with simplification. The last problem that we have here, we have 3 to the power n plus 4 minus 6 times 3 to the power n plus 1 over 3 to the power n plus 2 times 2. Okay, guys, very similar style to the previous one. Let's see whether we can get it done. Peter, you ready? Okay, good. <laughs> Let's start. I hope they can hear Peter, Peter on this, uh, on A. Okay. Now, we cannot cancel the 3 to the N here and the 3 to the N there because of the negative sign. So, what is the rules for these? We need to break it up. We need to break it. So the rules for these is you break it up. So let's put down the rules. When you see a question that looks like that in the exam, you break it up. You pull out the highest common factor. In 99, almost in 100% of the cases, what you pull out on the top and what you have at the bottom or what you pull out at the bottom is going to cancel itself out. So you cancel what's common. Cancel what's common. Don't worry about my spelling. I'm using WhatsApp language here on TV. Right. And then you simplify what's left over. Simplify what's left over. Okay. So let's break it up. Number one, we're going to have 3 to the power n times 3 to the power 4 minus 6 times 3 to the power n times 3 to the power 1 over 3 to the power n times 3 to the power 2 times 2. Good. Right, what do we do now? We now pull out, so we've done, we've broke it up. We now break up or break down, whichever term you'd like to use, as long as you make sure that you get them all as independent terms. We now pull out the highest common factor. So we look what's common between there and there. And here you can clearly see 3 to the power n is common. So we take out 3 to the n, that's out, that's out. What's left over? 3 to the power 4 minus 6 times 3 to the power 1 over, these are all multiplied. You only take out highest common factor if there's a plus or minus. If it's multiplication, you leave it. So we have 3 to the power n times 3 to the power 2 times 2. Okay, so there we, we remember we're following these steps religiously. Exactly as the order of these rules are, this is the rules for this type of problem. You follow it exactly the way it is. Now we cancel what's common. So what's common? 3 to the n at the bottom, 3 to the n at the top. Why can we cancel? Because we're multiplying. This is being multiplied by that term. And this is multiplication, so we can cancel. Now, we simplify what's left over. So what's left over? 3 to the power 4, 81, minus 6 times 3, 18, over 3 times 2 is 9 times 2. Now we know 81 minus 18 is 63, over 9 times 2 is 18. Now, what is 63 divided by 18? We can use our calculators. Let's simplify. Let's say 81 minus 18. Let's just double check. Yes, 63 divided by 9 times 2, which is 18. We get 7 over 2. And guys, that is your final answer. Okay, so please make sure you follow these steps. Whenever you see a problem like this, if you had another term at the bottom, just to show you, if you had another term, so say you had plus, I'm now changing it slightly, times 3 to the power n minus 4. Okay, now what you did to the top, you're going to do to the bottom again, and then you're just going to cancel it. But the problem looked like that. 
So it was being multiplied and that's the way you leave it in your denominator and that is the way that this problem will unfold. Some of you might ask how many marks would you get for something like this? Grade 11s and 12s you know you'd see 4 to 5 marks for this. Now this brings us to the end of exponents. We're now going to go on to thirds. Now we're going to be dealing with thirds, multiplying, dividing, removing third signs. So I need you guys to stay focused on this. Remember grade 12s you need this for calculus as well. So let's get started. Now the first thing that we're going to deal with in thirds is rationalizing the denominator. Now grade 11s and 12s, you've seen this over and over and over again. We're now going to be doing rationalizing the denominator. Or the question can say rewrite with a rational denominator. So basically you're going to be given a a, a fraction with an irrational de uh, denominator. What are rational numbers? What are irrational numbers? Non-recurring, like square root of two, not perfect squares. Okay, so if you take a number like square root of square root of two, it's irrational. Square root of three, it's irrational. Square root of five, it's irrational. You cannot say square root of four. So these are all your irrationals, and these are all your rationals. Because they are perfect squares, because you know the square root of 4 is 2. But if you went to the square root of 2 on your calculator, it would go on to infinity. All right, 1, 7, 3, 2, 4, 2, 3, going on to infinity. The same thing with the square root of 3 in, uh, uh, and square root of 5. So the rationals are perfect squares or perfect fractions, like a half. Half is 0, 0,5. It stops, so it's rational. The minute a fraction goes on, like a third, 0, 0,3, in fact, rational would be even recurring decimals, like 0, 0,3, 0, or a third, goes on to infinity, but it's recurring, it would be regarded as rational. But in any case, don't stress about that too much, let me show you what it looks like, so that you can then start applying the principle. Let's get our duster here, and let's get started here with rationalizing the denominator. So. The first time you get two types. So in rationalizing the denominator, you've got, you've got two types. You've got a single fraction over an irrational number, or sometimes you can have a number over two irrational numbers being separated by a plus or minus sign. Now, as you can see, the denominators are irrational. We need to rewrite it. We're not changing it. The answer to it would be exactly the same. Only thing with a rational denominator. Now from grade 11 or 12, I want you to understand something. 11s and 12s, when we did trigonometry, and you know that sine 45, your calculator gives it to you as square root 2 over 2 with a rational denominator. But when you are using your diagram, you get 1 over root 2. Now, 1 over root 2 and root 2 over 2 is exactly the same. If you check it as a decimal on your calculator, it's exactly the same. The only difference is that this one has got an irrational denominator and that one has got a rational denominator. Okay, so how do you get it from here to there? And that's what I'm about to show you today. So let's look at the two styles. Right, let's look at the first one. Example number one. If I told you 6 over root 2, I want you to rewrite. The question will say in the exam, write with a rational denominator. This grade 12s you won't be asked but it's a process. Grade 12s you might be asked this as a specific question on its own. So 6 over root 2, we take 6 over root 2, we want to rationalize the denominator and the rule is very simple, we multiply it by the same denominator over the same denominator. Now we know root 2 over root 2 is 1, okay? We're not changing the original. Now all we do, so you take the, what is the rule? Same, you multiply it by the same denominator over the same denominator and you take numerator times numerator, denominator times denominator. So what do we have? 6 times root 2 will give me 6 root 2 over. Root 2 times root 2 is 2. Now we can simplify that. There, it's already with the rational denominator, guys. It's already with the rational denominator. All you want to do now, you want to get it, you want to simplify it. It's not in its simplest form. So 2 goes into 2 once, 2 goes into 6 3 times. Your answer is 3 root 2. Now the question can say rewrite with the rational denominator because this is over 1. So 1 is a rational number. Or they can say 
This can be written in the form a root b. Find a and find b. So that's a root b. Therefore, a is equal to 3 and b is equal to 2. So this is the style in which the questions can be asked. So I'm going to give you, we're now going to be cutting for an ad break and then we're going to be going on to the next type. So before we cut for an ad break, let's just give you two to do during the break and let's see whether you can write it in this form. Rationalize the denominator. You've got three minutes to do it. I tell you 7 over square root 5. That's the first one I'd like you to do. And let's do 2 over uh, square root 3. There, there we go. Guys, you've got, you have three minutes to do it. When we get back from the break, we will continue with thirds. Enjoy the show. Assalamu alaikum and welcome back to the ITV Math Show. I'm your host and presenter, Mohammed Kota, shooting live here in Johannesburg. Now, guys, before we went for the break, before we cut for the break, uh, we started with thirds, with rationalizing the denominator. We gave you the first style. We said 6 over square root 2. We want you to rewrite it in the form A root B. Find A and find B. So what did I say? Whenever you see one term, so in this case here, there was one term, and in that case, there were there are two terms. I'm still going to, I'm about to show you how to do it when you have two terms in the denominator. So we said the rule is you take, you in the next step, you multiply it by the same denominator over the same denominator. Now you multiply numerator times numerator, denominator times denominator. Simplify it, we get an answer of 3 root 2, which is given in the form a root b. So a must represent the 3, or the 3 must represent a, and 2 must represent b, or the b must represent 2. Now, before we cut for the break, I told you then, let's do 7 over root 5, 2 over root 3. And let's see how well you did. Okay, so let's erase this. Let's erase this. And let's try. Let's start with the first one, which we said 7 over square root 5. Now, 7 over square root 5, we now multiply it by root 5 over root 5. Now, we say numerator times numerator, denominator times denominator. So, 7 times root 5. 7 root 5 over denominator times denominator root 5 times root 5 is 5 can we simplify that guys like in the previous one no because there's nothing that's common you cannot cancel the 5 here and the 5 there that's square root 5 and that's 5 if this number here was 20 or 35 or whatever the case may be then you could say 5 into 20 so many times for example let's do one like that so if i told you 20 over square root 5 and I told you to uh, rewrite with the rational denominator or write it in the form a root b you would now multiply it by root 5 over root 5 so now you're gonna get 20 root 5 over root 5 times root 5 is 5 exactly what we've done there but in that that case that's its simplest form in this case we can still still simplify it further so 5 goes into 5 once, 5 goes into 20, 4 times, we're left with 4 root 5, which is a root b, therefore a is equal to 4, and b is equal to 5. Okay, there we go. The same would apply with 2 over root 3. Let's look at 2 over root 3, 2 over square root 3, we multiply it by root 3 over root 3. So, you're now left with 2 times root 3 is 2 root 3, over root 3 times root 3 is 3. Can we, can we rewrite that? Uh, can we simplify that any further? No, that would be your final answer. They, they would then probably, if they gave it to you in this style, they could say that this here is written in the form a root b over c. Find a, b, c. a is 2, b is 3, c represents also 3. Okay, so that is the first component of rationalizing the denominator when there's one term in the denominator. Let's now go on to the second component when there are two terms in the denominator. Now, sometimes, guys, both of them are not irrational. Sometimes you can have a number here. You'll have a number, a whole number there, a whole number there, and an irrational, or an irrational here and a whole number. But that's not important. What's important is that we identify that in this one here, there was only one term. In that one, there are two terms. So, what is the process? I know you guys have seen it. Let's see you guys take this problem down. I give you an example. I tell you to rationalize the denominator, and I tell you 5 over. Choose any number there. Let's take a number 4 plus root 3. There we go. Five, 5 over 4 plus root 3. I want you to rewrite that with a rational. As it stands, it's irrational. 
I want you to rewrite this with a rational denominator. So how do we do that? Let's go back. Now, here we multiplied it by the same term over the same term to give me one. We now, in this case, we multiplied by the same denominator over the same denominator, but we change the sign in the middle. So if this is positive, that will be negative. Okay? Why? Because we want the denominator after we multiply to be a difference of two squares. And I'll show you exactly what, what do we mean by that. So the rule is you take the same denominator over the same denominator, which is also 1. If you cancel that and cancel that, you get 1. 1 times this, you're not changing it in any way because 1 times any number still keeps the number. Now we say numerator times numerator, denominator times denominator. What do we have? 5 times 4 minus root 3 is written as 5 times 4 minus root 3 over, we now have 4 plus root 3 times 4 minus root 3. Now we know that this is a difference of two squares, x plus y, x minus y. Okay, so now what do we do? We have 5 into 4 minus root 3, that's my numerator. Now how do we remove the difference of two squares? We multiply the two first terms and the two second terms. So what do, I, what do we have? 4 times 4 is 16. Positive times negative, negative. Root 3 times root 3 is 3. Your final answer with a rational, because now you can see it's been rationalized already, your final answer is 5 into 4 minus root 3 over 16 minus 3 is 13. And there we go. We've rewritten that, the original, with a rational denominator. How did we do that? We multiplied it by the same denominator over the same denominator, but we changed the sign in the middle. And then all we did is we took numerator times numerator, denominator times denominator, and we simplified it. Let's do one more example just to get you practicing. Many of you will, might be asking there, Mr. K, can you do us one more? Let's do it. Peter, one more? One more. Okay, let's ask the guys in studio to give us a value. Instead of the number 5 here, give me a number on the top. 6. Oh, good. Give me, give, me a num give me two values here. We take the number 2 and we take minus and let's give us another value. Square root of? Square root of 9? No, but uh, square root of 9 is a ratio. Give, let's take square root 8. Square root, square root 9 is a rational because square root 9 is 3. We want an irrational denominator. So we're choosing... 2 over 6. Now, what are we going to do? We're now going to multiply this. So this is the irrational form. We want to now write it with a rational form. So we're now going to multiply this by 2 root 8, 2 root 8. What did I say here? You had a plus, you've got a minus. So we've got a minus. What do we have here? A positive. There we go. Now we say numerator times numerator, denominator times denominator right hope you guys are enjoying the show and i hope you guys are working with us so what do we have we've got two six into two plus root eight over we've got two minus root eight into two plus root eight now we're going to have six into two plus root eight that's our numerator over difference of two squares guys two times two is four negative times positive is a negative root eight times root eight is eight now we can simplify that we left with 6 into 2 plus root 8 over 4 minus 8, negative 4. Now we know we can simplify that further. So this is equal to positive divided by a negative is a negative. 2 goes into there twice or 2 times. 2 goes into here 3 times. My answer is 3, open brackets, 2 plus root 8 all over 2. Right? Remember, positive divided by a negative. We never leave a negative sign alone in the denominator. It's just mathematically rude. It's mathematically incorrect. It, would, it wouldn't be wrong, but it's just not mathematically correct. Okay. And there we go. So positive divided by negative is a negative. We've got 3 into 2 plus root 8 all over 2. I hope you guys are... And that's it, guys. That's it for rationalizing the denominator. So we had one term where it was over one term. We took it, we multiplied it by the same denominator over the same denominator. 
Then we took numerator times numerator, denominator times denominator, and we simplified it. And then we had the second scenario where we had two terms in the denominator. We multiplied it by the same denominator over the same denominator, but we changed the sign. So if it was negative, we'd put positive. If it was positive, we put negative. And we went ahead and we simplified it. And that is the end of rationalizing the denominator. Okay guys, we are about to cut for an ad break. When we get back from the ad break, we will continue with thirds. So stay, stay tuned and stay focused. Enjoy the show. Assalamu alaikum and welcome to the ITV math show with me, your host Mohamed Kota. I hope you guys are enjoying the show. We, this is the last segment of today's show. If you guys have missed any of the previous segments or any of the previous episodes, please log on to itvnetworks.tv. Go on to the K-Way logo, double click and upload all the previous episodes. Today's episode will only be uploaded in 24 hours time. So if you miss any of the segments today, don't go on tonight now and try and look for it. You'll get it up. You'll get it by tomorrow. Now, we're having lots of fun here in the in, in studio and we've now coming to the end of thirds. So these are the type of questions that could be asked in, in the exam. Before, before we cut for the ad break in the previous segment, we did rationalizing the denominator. We're now going to go on to just simplifying and removing brackets with irrational thirds uh, in the question. So these are the questions. Let's go to the answers. Let's now answer question number one. And grade 11s and 12, you know this is what you're going to be seeing in the exam. So these are your questions. Let's just put it there. Questions. And those are your answers. Let's start with question number one. Okay, so question number one says square root 7 minus... 2 into root 7 plus 2. Now already we, we've identified in here that this is a difference of two squares. x plus y, x minus y. a minus b, a plus b. So where, what is the rule for it from our rules of products? You multiply the two first terms, you multiply the two second terms. It's as simple as that. So root 7 times root 7 is 7. The square root of a number times the square root of itself will always give you the number. Just remember that. So root 2 times root 2, 2. Root 5 times root 5, 5. Root 10 times root 10, 10. Okay, now negative times a positive is a negative. 2 times 2, 4. What is 7 minus 4? 3. Is that my final answer? Yes. Is there anything further I can do with that? No. Okay, question number 2. We now have root 10 minus 2 root 2 into root 10 plus 2 root 2. Exactly the same, slightly more challenging, but the concept is the same. So again, my two first terms, my two second terms. So root 10 times root 10, 10. Negative times a positive, negative times a positive, negative. 2 times 2, 4. Times, remember that's times. Root 2 times root 2, 2. So we have 10 minus 4 times 2, 8. 10 minus 8, 2. Final answer? That's it. Okay, let's do the last one. The answer to question number 3, I'm just going to do it here. Now yeah, you guys are going to need to pay a little attention because it's squared. So pay attention. This is root 5 minus... Right, what is the cube root of negative 27? So the cube root of a negative is always a negative. The cube root of 27 is 3. And now we're going to square it. So that's going to give me root 5, negative times negative is a positive, 9 squared. There we go. Negative times, oops, negative times negative is a positive, 3 squared. Okay, now we're squaring it. This is now not a difference of two squares. We are squaring it. Now, from our episode on products, we are now going to be using the shortcut method. Shortcut method. I'm going to show you both methods, the shortcut or the longer method, because some of you probably didn't watch that episode and you wouldn't be knowing what am I doing unless you had uploaded the episode or watched that episode and practiced on it. So, I'm not going to, we're going to use both methods now, guys. We're going to use method 1 and method 2. So here we go. We got method 1. We got method 2. Right? So this here could be root 5 plus 3 
into root 5 plus 3. Right? We're squaring it. We're squaring this entire bracket. So now, remember, now it's not the difference of two squares. Now you've got to foil it out. And from your rules from grade 9, everyone knows from your rules of products, you take your two first terms, your two outer terms, your two inner terms, your two last terms. So what are your, your two first terms? Root 5 times root 5 is 5. Root 5 times 3 is 3 root 5. Plus, again, your two inner terms, 3 times root 5 is another 3 root 5. And now your two last terms, plus 3 times 3 is 9. So what do I have? 5 plus 9, 14. 3 root 5 plus 3 root 5 plus 6 root 5. And there we go, guys. That is your final answer. Your answer is 14 plus 6 root 5. Now, there's another way of doing it. Okay? The other way of doing it is we've got, let's just do it here on the side, we've got root 5 plus 3 squared. What did we say? Square the first term. So if we square the first term, we're left with 5 because root 5 squared is 5. Square the second term. Plus 3 squared is plus 9. Multiply the 2 and times it by 2. That was our shortcut that we did in our previous episodes. Multiply the 2 and times it by 2. So 3 times root 5 is 3 root 5 times 2 plus 6 root 5. So what do I have? 5 plus 9, I have 14 plus 6 root 5. Do I have the same answer? Yes, I do. And we get it in, we get it exactly. Look, you just, in the one you're doing this year mentally, you're doubling it, you're multiplying it by two year, you're physically multiplying your first, outer, inner, last, and collecting your two like terms in the middle. So you should get exactly the same result. Okay, let's continue. We're now continuing with thirds onto the final component of thirds. Right? These were the first three questions in thirds. I hope you took them down. I hope you mastered them. And I hope that you will now get these right in your final exams. Now remember, like I said, this is for grade 11 and 12. Okay, now you get a situation where you get a whole number underneath the search. So now we have root 18 minus root 2 over root 8. And they say simplify without the use of a calculator for four to about 4 marks. Okay, different set of rules, guys. Whenever you see something that looks like this, this is what you do. Here are your rules. Underneath the third sign, underneath the third sign, you want to have a prime number times a perfect square. Now, what are your prime numbers, guys? Like we said, twos, threes, or fives. Twos, threes, or fives. Multiplied by a perfect square. Now, what are your perfect squares? 4, because the square root of 4 is 2, um, 9, 16, or 25. So it must be any one of these combinations to give you the number underneath here. So, what's the easiest way? You start with the lowest prime. Start with your lowest prime. What's your lowest prime number here, guys? 2. So this is the square root of 2. Now, 2 goes into 18 how many times? 9. But is 9, now you ask the question, is 9, so we got 2 times 9 to give me 18. Is 9 a perfect square? So 2 is a prime number, 9 is a perfect square, yes. So is that the right combination? Yes, it is. You might ask, but why can't I use the number 3? Okay, let's put the number 3. 3 times what will give me 18? 6. Yes, 3 is prime. But is the number 6 a perfect square? No, it's not a perfect square, so we cannot use. The rule is prime times perfect. 2 times 9 minus square root 2 over. In 8, we got 2 times 4. Your lowest prime times a perfect square. Now, what is the square root of 9? 3 root 2 minus root 2 over 2 root 2. Okay, so now because the square root of 9 is 3, we left root 2, and we've got the square root of 4 is 2, we got 2 root 2. Now 3 root 2 minus 1 root 2. 3x minus 1x is 2x. 
3 root 2 minus 1 root 2 is 2 root 2 over 2 root 2. 2 and 2 will cancel, root 2, root 2 will cancel. Your final answer is 1. Okay, guys, we're coming towards the end of the show. I'm now going to do another, I'm going to put up another, let's do one more quickly before we, con uh, before we wrap up today's show. Hope you guys are enjoying today's show and I hope that you are uploading all our episodes or downloading all the episodes or watching them on itvnetworks.tv. Like we said, click on the I uh, K-Way icon and upload all the previous episodes. Let's go. One more, root 75 plus root 3 over root 27. Simplify without the use of a calculator. Let's do it quickly. We're applying the same rule. We say this is the square root of 3 goes into year 25 times. 3 times 25. 3 is a prime number. 25 is a perfect square. Plus square root 3 over the square root of 3 times 9 to give me 27. Square, the square root of 25, 5 root 3 plus 1 root 3 over square root of 9, 3 root 3. 5 root 3 plus 1 root 3, 6 root 3 over 3 root 3. Root 3 and root 3 will cancel. 6 divided by 3 is 2. And that is our final answer. Boys and girls, hope you guys enjoyed the show. Hope you guys are staying focused. And I hope you guys are logging on to our website and watching all these shows. Uh, rewriting all this. Remember, like we said, you are rewriting your own study guide. So please make sure you take all these notes down. Uh, it was fantastic having you. And uh, we'll see you again for our next show. Um, from me, Mohamed Kota, and from the ITV team here in studio, we'd like to say, enjoy maths, and let's get a distinction. الجاد قد عظمات فللأمجاد بانيها ومن يسعى إلى العليا سيدركها بما فيها ويبني مجده جدلا فروح الفاذ يعليها ليصبح همة تروي عن العليا 